Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said da'a ma la ma yuribak ila ma la yuribak Leave that which does not concern you for that which concerns you. The Prophet والسلام, gave us the best example and the best sunnah. And so what I wanted to discuss in relation to this hadith is the importance for us as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah that we should be cautious about getting into those affairs which don't concern us. And from amongst those affairs is when we have problems and issues between the students of knowledge from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, or when we have problems and issues with between the ulama of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So, for example, you'll find individuals warning against this one, warning against that one, with little or no knowledge, and they are making taqlid themselves. They are blind following someone. And I'm not saying that if they are blind following a well-known, uh, grounded student of knowledge or one of the ulama, their statements, then this is fine because they do not have the ability to go to the text and go and make bahuth or research into the issue. So then maybe they take an opinion. But my point being is that they should not go around being harsh with the other people because they don't share their opinion. Nor will it benefit them. So leave that which doesn't concern you for that which concerns you. And I'll give you an example. A particular individual, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in them and bless us in them. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Asked me once about one of the conferences in the UK or about a masjid there. And I, refer, I replied, I said, I don't know the masjid. I have never been to the UK except for in the airports. But I've never stepped outside of the airport, so I don't know the masjid in Birmingham. I don't know the masjid in Luton. I don't know the masjid in Croydon. I don't know the masjid in Brixton and in, in London and where, wherever. I don't know because I've never been there as far as first-hand experience. But I know Ahl Sunnah is, is all around. Alhamd. So the person, I don't know if they were trying to test me or they were just, or they actually sincerely wanted to know something, but they said, you said about Luton that it was okay and this and that and the other. And I said, I did not because I don't know Luton, although I know some Mashaykh and I know Mashaykh have been there. Mashaykh Ahl Sunnah. So for me, this is sufficient, even if whatever the issues may be in the masjid, whether they have issues or not, as we all have issues, and we all make mistakes, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kul ibn Adam khata wa khayna khata ina All the children of Adam make mistakes, and the best of those are those who repent. So that doesn't negate that they, uh, there may be mistakes in the masjid, maybe mistakes in the leadership, I don't know. So I'm not the one to ask. This is better to ask those people in those localities from Ahl Sunnah who know. Or ask the ulama who know, who visited and have been there and know what's going on there. Bi'idnillah. So, my point being is I told this individual to keep silent and just learn that you should not get into these issues. You, these issues are way above your level. The individual also replied and said, only Suhaimi is the only Salafi Sheikh that was at such and such conference. I said, SubhanAllah. Because when you say something like this, You've negated all of those ulama that were with Sheikh. In fact, a Sahimi should, should would have been more proper to say Sheikh Salih Sahimi or Alama Sheikh uh, 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 Salih Sahimi, because he's well known. He's been teaching the Haram for how many years, and he's an elder, and he's well known for his alm and thiq and his wisdom in dealing with issues, and his shaja and his bravery. May Allah subhanahu wa taala preserve him and bless us to get a chance to benefit from him again. Amin ya alamin. And so, when this individual who doesn't know much about their religion, who's more or less recently only embraced Islam, made these kind of 
remarks, it angered me because I saw that they were wasting time in those things that does not concern them. And they were blind following people who I don't know who are much who, who are just telling them and feeding this individual and this individual individual is asking and just falling into all kind of things, even falling into what? Belittling the ulama. And I want to mention something. Today, Walila al was one of the first days in almost a year that I've been able to do any Talib al Am with the Mashaykh. Shaykh Abdul Razak uh, ibn Badr, the son of Shaykh Abdul Masan al Abad, al Lama, was here and very close to my house. So I made the sacrifice, which was very little, and sat for some of the dars, the first hour and a half of the dars, as the dars is still going on. It was a whole day dora, but I was unable to attend. The point being, I'm going to mention a benefit that the Sheikh mentioned in our study of the book uh, Sariya Sunnah by Imam Tabari. And he was mentioning in the Muqaddimah, in the beginning, he said, one of the, I just wrote down some of the benefits the Sheikh mentioned about, which is very relevant to our topic. He said, Shan ulama talab al bayan wal al minhum. And this was a, uh, a faida, so it's. I, just trying to give you some of the context. The point being, he said that the the affairs of the ulama, what their job is, is to, and what how we benefit from them, how do we benefit from the ulama, is we seek clarity from them and clarification. And we seek knowledge from them. We seek their wisdom. We seek all the benefits that we gain from the ulama. And then he mentioned, because Imam al-Tabari in, in his introduction in the book, he was mentioning, he had some very strong statements in the introduction, and he was talking about, basically, uh, that more or less if the ulama, uh, to basically not to fall into taqlid, blind following, because the ulama make mistakes. So the sheikh mentioned, he said, uh, that, you know, the perhaps the meaning, he said, لَعَلَّمَعْنَا أَنَ الْعُلَمَا لَيْسِ بِمَعْسُومِينَ وَهَذَا لَا يَنْفِي إِسْتِفَادَ مِنْهُمْ This is beautiful. This is what I wanted to mention. So he said, perhaps the meaning of this ibarah, and so we would have to go back and try to translate, and it's actually some difficult ibarat uh, to go through, and that's not the point that we're sitting here and discussing. But the point is, the sheikh said, and uh, ma'ana, he said, and perhaps the meaning of this sentence of Imam al-Tabari is that the scholars are not without mistakes, ma'sumin. They're not like the NBA. They're not like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They yusibu yukhti. They get things right and they get things wrong. All the ulama, our biggest ulama that we love in this time and from the Salaf. If you understand that qaida and do not belittle the ulama with this, but we, we trust the ulama of Ahl Sunnah and due to their knowledge and their fadl, because mostly, of course, they're correct. And this is why they're ulama of sunnah. But that doesn't mean in every mas'ala, everything. And so that's why, even when it comes to blind following for the student of knowledge, if they have the knowledge in that particular mas'ala, then they should operate by their knowledge be in the love, it's sound knowledge, instead of just making taqlid. I can't just say, well, Sheikh Ibrahim said this, Sheikh Obey just said this, Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad bin Hadi said this, Sheikh uh, uh, Salih Suhaini said this, Sheikh bin Baz said this, and, and that's it. If I know that there's some difference with the ulama, not meaning from my had, but looking at the differences between the ulama, and, and if you have the ability to go into the issue and say, oh, his dila seems stronger to me. So that's why I'm not making taqlid of this alam. So then the Sheikh mentioned, after saying that the end of ulama laysi bi ma'sumin, that they are not without mistakes. Wahada la yanfi istifada minhum. And that does not negate benefiting from them. Habatifillah. If we were to practice this, this is what this, this alam, Sheikh Abdul Razak mentioned to, to us today in the dars. And this is a qaida for us who do in Talib and we should know this. I, alhamdulillah, I, it's not, I'm not, uh, you know, bidna Allah, it's not a praise for myself, but I've already known because our ulama drilled that into us when we began Talib al not to uh, make taqlid 
Sheikh Muqbil was a shiddin nas al muqallidin although there is a majal and this may differ with the Sheikh's view uh, and Ibn Uthaymeen goes into the issue and, and brings much stronger adilla about that there are times and this is what many of the Salaf and many of our uh, uh, those who preceded us we see that that Yes, there's a time for the, uh, of course, the Ammi, the person who doesn't have the ability to go in the text, they have, they make taklid. And we make taklid all the time. We have Sheikh Al-Bani's books, and we just say Sheikh Al-Bani said it's Sahih. And we make taklid of Imam Al-Bani because he's known for his fadl, he's known for his ilm, he's known for his fiqh, he's known for hadith. So we trust him and we make taklid because I don't have the ability to, to go into those books. Those hadith, I'm not a muhaddith. I don't have that ability. I don't have that. Allah's not favored me with that element. I didn't put energy into that that type of knowledge to make takhrij of hadith and even go in and, and look at ilm al-rijal and all of these things. So the point is we have to make taqlid in many affairs. But it's not, there's impermissible taqlid. But this is not the time or place to talk about that. The point being a habit of Allah. As as the Sheikh said, وَهَذَا لَا يَنْفِي إِسْتِفَادَ مِنْهُمْ That doesn't negate benefiting from them. If an alim makes a mistake, he makes some ijtihad, that doesn't mean you no longer can benefit from him. And likewise, this even goes for our students of knowledge in the West and in the East. That you shouldn't, because so-and-so, brother so-and-so, didn't agree with this brother, and this brother refuted him, maybe the brother made a mistake. And maybe the brother is looking to the issue, whatever the case may be. But you shouldn't be quick to negate the benefit you gain from him or her, if she's a talibat al-ilm that teaches the sisters or what have you. You should not be quick to belittle them and destroy them. As the Sheikh said, وَهَذَا لَا يَنْفِي إِسْتِفَادَ مِنْهُمْ That doesn't negate benefiting from them. And so this also, I want to mention, related to a post I just recently we had an exchange, brother was talking about, uh, I mentioned Salafi publications, and I mentioned Medina.com, I mentioned Troy, and I mentioned Salafi Minhaj, and, and about their differences. And, the, and some of the brothers said, it's so confusing for us because we see these brothers attacking one another, and, you know, we believe that they're Salafi, or, you know, it makes it confusing for us. And I'm telling you this, that was the reason I mentioned that, is because no doubt, the Salafis in general, whether they be from Brixton, whether they be from Birmingham in the various camps, whether they be from Croydon, Luton, Hull, Hull England, wherever, or in Jakarta, uh, but meaning especially in the West, the English speakers, that no doubt Maktaba Salafia and Troyd being at the forefront because they were the, for the English speaking world, they were the predecessors in really bringing the da'wah and translating from the ulama. And later came Medina.com, which also has, has an excellence in refuting uh, um, mukhalifin and you know bringing benefit from the ulama and speaking out against extremism. And likewise, Salafi Menhaj uh, has a website and others that have translated. There's so much work out there from Ahl Sunnah. So my thing is that if you find a mistake or mistakes plural do not be quick to belittle your brothers but rather benefit from them and in those areas which you feel that there may be some mistake or some extremism or some mumaya as they say is, is being uh, throwing away the principles then avoid those but don't throw away the baby with the dishwaters so to speak don't throw away all the benefit and not gain benefit and so this is my advice to myself, first and foremost, and my brothers and sisters. And may Allah bless us with al nafi al-Muttaqabbilin. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. And may Allah bless us with those things which please Him. And forgive us for those things which displease Him. And guide us to sirat al-Mustaqeem. And may Allah bless us to be from Ahl Sunnah. And unite us with the Anbiya. And may Allah help the Muslims everywhere. Protect the Muslims everywhere. Preserve the Muslims everywhere. And may Allah bless us to be a source and a guidance and a light for the non-Muslims, for them to come to Islam, embrace Islam in droves, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah forgive us of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.